So Ruizu is a Chinese company that makes portable media players or MP4 players. This X06 is one of the many players in their range. A lot of their players look very similar with the same kind of button layout, uh, but they're sort of very cosmetic. This is a 4GB internal storage model. I paid about £13 and got it a few years ago. It also comes in like blue and red, and I think up to 8GB internal storage. It is expandable by microSD though. I'm going to start off by going through the construction and some of the features on this, but then I'm going to go through the software and give some tips and tricks on how the hell to use this thing. So if you want to skip ahead, there'll be a link in the description. The player is fairly compact, measuring 9cm by 4cm, and it's about 1cm thick. It's made of this sort of soft kind of touch plastic, uh, which is maybe a little bit cheap feeling, but it's just plastic. There's nothing wrong with it. The screen there is a 1.8 inch LCD, and that's made of plastic rather than glass. Despite sport branding Ruizu put on this player, there's no clip or anything, but I went ahead and got a clip and some super glue and it works really well to be honest, I'd highly recommend this. The main navigational buttons are on the front, you've got so four buttons and also a central one and I'll go through like what each button does uh, later on. You've also got a power switch on the side to turn it on and off. On the bottom you've got the ports, so there's a 3.5mm jack and a micro USB. And finally on the side there's the uh, internal micro SD card slot. So as I said the internal storage on this is 4 gig, or you can get 8 gig, and you can put a card up to 64 gigabytes in this. The main thing this player is made for is playing music, so it supports all the major music formats including lossless it can also open a few formats of images. Uh, as far as videos go, it only opens one weird format I've not heard of, so probably not a video playing device. It's got the sort of standard things like shuffle and repeat. It's got an equalizer, but this only has presets rather than being customizable, so uh, audio files might be a bit disappointed with that. Like most MP3 players, it can sort of look at all your music and look at the metadata and then figure out, you know, what artist it is, what album it is. One of the issues with that as you use the device actually is it defaults to looking at the internal storage and not the card, so it will give you only what's on the internal storage but you can tell it explicitly to look at the card folder like I'm doing here. So that takes a little while to get done. But if you do do that and you're playing music from the card, it will default by looking at the music on the card. As for the actual stripping um, of the uh, metadata, it does an okay job, but on some of my music, it manages to mess it up. One of the first issues that's cropping up with this software, and I'll talk about more of the other quirks and issues uh, later on. One of the big features this has is that it has Bluetooth. So you can connect it to wireless headphones or wireless speakers. You can go into the Bluetooth menu in order to do that. And you have to sort of, you know, do the standard thing, search for your device. Cool. So I found my device, that took a little while, uh, and it's just going to connect now. Once you're connected in Bluetooth, you can access your music only in this menu, so not when you're back in the main menu. And you can look at either sort of the local internal memory or the card folder. And this is the same as looking at the file view, which I've not covered yet, but I'll cover later on. So it's different to that music menu where it was trying to strip the metadata. It will look at what folders there are and what files there are. As far as playlists go on the device, the easiest way to use them is to use these sort of on-the-go playlists. So there's three different on-the-go playlists and you can add artists, albums or songs. So just to give an example, if I go on an artist, I can say add to playlist and add it on one of the on-the-go playlists and it takes a few seconds. Unfortunately, you can't sort of multi-select songs or artists and quickly put something together. So it's quite a time consuming process. The reason why I say the on-the-go playlist is the main way to do playlists is because if you try and create a playlist from scratch, what it will do is make a list of every single song on the device and put them in one list. So potentially thousands and thousands of songs that you have to scroll through very slowly. So it's just really not worthwhile. There's a few little bonus features. The first of which is a voice recorder which is, uh, you know, surprisingly functional. It's it's not going to be a professional microphone, but it, it does the job and it could be handy in a pinch. Uh, the other things you've got on here is an FM radio, although this only works with the included earphones which act as the antenna, so it's not really going to be use useful at all. Then you've got the facility to read ebooks if you want to read on this, you know, 1.8 inch screen, then it can open up EPUB files, I believe. And then finally, you've got a few little tools. There's a calendar, stopwatch, and alarm. Okay, so let's open the can of worms that is the software on this uh, media player. Let's start off with something that you'd think would be quite a standard thing in devices, and that is turning this thing on and off. There's actually two ways to do it. So the first way is using the switch on the side, uh, which I showed before. Um, the only caveat to this is when you use the switch to turn it off, it doesn't remember what it was doing. So if you're playing in the middle of a song and you turn it off here, you turn it back on, the song will be gone, you'll be back to standard. Um, the significance of this as well is that when you're using this music menu, by default it will show you what's on the local storage and not the card. But if you're already playing music on the card and you go into your artist, then it will show you the stuff that's on the card. So this is a you know, weird little thing. 
Um, but if you're already playing something from the card, then it will show you stuff from the card. So for this reason, the alternative way to turn it off, which is to use this middle button on the device and holding it like so, is the preferred way to turn it off. And then when you want to turn it on again, you have to turn it off and then on. Okay, so I'll now go through the buttons. So you've got four buttons on here and a middle button. Firstly, the vol button is also back. So if you want to go back in a menu, use that. And here's one of the weirdest things. Left and right are up and down, as well as being left and right. So right will send you down, like so, and left will send you up. That, that takes a while to get used to, not gonna lie. So that's navigation. And then this M key at the front is usually for extra little options based on what you are on. So you could add things to a playlist like that. Or if you're on now playing, then you can access settings for the sound, like I was showing before, like an equalizer or your play mode up here. The volume is actually changed by holding the vol button and that will come up with your volume menu and then you use left and right as your up and down. And it's got 30 different sort of notches of volume. So that's really nice. So next up, there's uh, two ways to view music on this device. Let me get back to the main menu. So there's the music menu, which I've showed you before and that, you know, that'll load up your artists, or it will try to. In my case, it does miss out quite a few. So the other way, which is tends to be my preferred way to go through files, is by using the folder view. It will show you the files exactly as they are and won't do anything to them. The only problem with this is you can't sort of shuffle, um, but I tend to use this when I want to play music in order because it keeps my uh, formatting that I've got on the files, like you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Whereas when you are on the music sort of menu and you do the same thing, it's really smart and it takes away the numbers. So yeah, all the numbers have gone and then it reorders them. Now I'll talk about what it's like to actually use this on a sort of day-to-day -day basis. Starting off with the sort of physical features, it's small, fits in your hand quite well. All of the buttons are quite tactile, which is nice. So it means you know when you're pressing them. And because of the layout of the buttons, you can sort of use this without looking at the screen. Like say if it's in your pocket and you want to just change the volume, um, I find it quite easy to, you know, hold the volume button I can change it or pause the song or skip a song. So it's quite good in that respect. A small thing that's missing, which would be nice to have, is the ability to lock the buttons. So this has resulted in the occasional accidental press if I bump into something while it's in my pocket. The uh, 1.8 inch screen, it's uh, very readable. It gets quite bright. One of the issues with it is it is quite reflective. And I think this is just gonna be typical for a you know, plastic screen. Uh, it's really cheap. One feature that I thought they might have included because it's like a sport orientated thing is a clip. It, obviously they didn't include a clip, but uh, as you can see, I've got my little improvised uh, thing here. I'd really recommend doing this if you buy one of these because you can just attach it to your clothes and it works exactly the same as a proper clip would. I just use super glue, as I mentioned. Now the battery life, uh, they, Optimistically promise you 100 hours, which I think is a bit ridiculous. The cell in there is 680 milliamp hours, so a pretty reasonable size for the size of the device. And I did sort of my own little internal test, and I got at least 30 to 35 hours listening to music on a medium sort of volume. And I'd say that's really good for a really cheap device. I think if you were using Bluetooth, this value would probably be less, because I think that might use a bit more battery. On the music side of things, the volume, it goes really high. So I think this could drive, you know, most headphones because there's a lot of volume there. As far as sound quality goes, it sounds as good as any player I've used. Obviously there isn't really the ability to fine tune the sound as there's no real equalizer, but I think, you know, the standard sound is okay. Uh, my gripes with the music side is it doesn't really get all the metadata properly on some of my files. And I don't think it's my files that are a problem. I think it is this. So that means some of my albums aren't accessible in the normal music menu, but I do tend to use the folder view, as I mentioned. So I don't really have a problem. Playlist making, I don't use. Um, you can build up these on the go playlists as I talked about, and I think that's probably the best solution. As far as competition goes, there's a lot of other Chinese cheap MP3 players. There's probably pages and pages. I can't speak for any of them. I can say this is all right and it works. There's the X02 by Ruizu as well, which looks very similar, probably identical software. So I think with any of those, it, they're probably all very similar. Uh, it's just a case of what you think like. It's just a case of what you like the look of. I think the Bluetooth on this is a rare feature, so maybe that's one thing this has got going for it. As for more mainstream kind of MP3 player brands, SanDisk have quite affordable players as well. Maybe you say double the price of this. The software is gonna be a lot better on them. And also they have support for this software called Rockbox usually. And that's an amazing like custom software that has way more features than you could ever need. Unfortunately, it's not supported on here. As far as I understand, it's because the performance of the X06 isn't high enough, like the RAM and the processor. Okay, let's do the standard summary stuff. 
So this is a really cheap player, comes in at £13, and it, you know, it works, it plays music and that sort of thing. It's got a really long battery life, 30 to 35 hours, maybe even more, a bit less if you're using Bluetooth. The sort of physical proportions of the device and using it, that's quite a good experience, so no complaints there. So the last thing is really durability. I've had this for a few years and it's still working just how it was when I got it. Okay, onto the cons. The first one is gonna be this software, which, um, as I've said, it has a bit of a learning curve. As you've seen, there's a few weird quirks. One of the major issues with it though is particularly with the music playing functionality because especially with my files some of my artists it's not able to read the data and i've had a look over my files and it doesn't seem to be the metadata on the files so it's something this is doing potentially another thing lacking is the ability to have an equalizer some people will miss that feature but for others it's not a big deal for me it's not a huge deal and a very minor thing is that you can't lock the buttons on it so sometimes you get the odd button pressed by accident okay that's all i have to say if you have any more questions drop them in the comments otherwise i'll see you in the next one.